started. So for number one here, first thing we have to do is find volume. You know, last class we went over that difference between volume and capacity. So we're gonna start out with the volume here. Our base, of course, is gonna be the bottom part there. This is the 32 inches by 18 inches. So 32 times 18 is 576 inches squared. So the area of the base for the volume, the area of that base, the 576 square inches times the 8 inches of height. There's 4,608 cubic inches of volume. But we asked how many gallons can that tank hold? So to convert from volume to capacity, remember they both kind of measure the same thing just in two different ways. So we're going from cubic inches into gallons. We know that one gallon is approximately, really close to 231 cubic inches. So the cubic inches cancel out. 4,608 times one gallon is 4,608 gallons over one times 231 is 231. We divide that out. 4,608 gallons divided by 231 is 9.95 or 19.95 gallons. So that tank is just under 20 gallons. wasn't horrible, but it did require this little bit of an awkward conversion, and it's an estimate, because it's not exact, of one gallon is 231 cubic inches. Now over here on our metric side, finding our volume again is going to require the area of the base again. Here it's going to be that bottom part of 82 centimeters by 42 centimeters, which gives us 3,000, oops, 2,444 centimeters squared. So then the volume there, be that area of that base, 3,444 square centimeters times that height of 22 centimeters. <clears throat> you know, 75,768. Cubic centimeters. Well, to change that to capacity in the metric system, one cubic centimeter is defined to be a milliliter. So that's just 75,768 milliliters. And of course, we were asked to put it in liters. If you recall on our chart, liters is our main unit. So it's deciliters, centiliters, and then milliliters get from milliliters to liters, we go three spots to the left on the chart. So I move my decimal point, three spots to the left. So it's 75.768 liters. Now I didn't ask this as part of the opening problem, but which tank is larger? So to figure that out, I would have to take my 19, uh, I could either convert my 19.95 gallons into liters or the 75.768 liters into gallons. I'm gonna do my 19.95 gallons into liters. So I'm gonna start out 19.95 gallons over one. Gallons will go on bottom so they cancel out. One gallon is 3.785 liters. Gallons cancel out is 19.95. 3.785. This is a 75.51 liters. Really close to the same size. This one here was slightly larger. Looks like about a quarter of a liter larger, 0.25 liters larger. 
Okay, so last class we defined the difference between volume and capacity so that we could talk about capacity units and how they fit in. To start off today's class, we need to discuss the difference between weight and mass. And the difference between the two is pretty subtle. Weight is a measurement of the force of gravity pulling on an object. Mass is a measurement of the amount of matter in an object. What do I mean by the amount of matter? What's well, the amount of material, the amount of particles in that object, the amount of stuff in that object? Well, you might think, well, what's the difference? Having more matter, more, um, more mass is going to give you more weight. And that's very true. They are very closely related. But the biggest difference is in how they are measured. Um, gravity is a force. And force is typically measured by comparing it to a spring. And let me show you just briefly how that works. Let's say we have a wall and we have a spring attached to it. And when the spring is at rest, that's where the end of it sits. By at rest, I mean there's no push or pull on that spring, no force on that spring. Now if I take that spring and I stretch it, I'm going to call the force that I put on it F, and the distance it stretched from where it was at rest to where it is now, I'm going to call that distance X. Well, if I take that same spring and I stretch it to a distance that is twice as far, so I'm going to call that 2x, the force also doubles. It's two times the force. So the, the, the amount of force on a good spring is directly proportional to the length that it stretches from its resting point. So we can use a spring, we can use the, the distance that a spring has stretched in a good spring within its limits as a, as a very, very precise measurement of the amount of force that is on it. So we use that then to measure our mass. We take our spring and we'll mount it in some sort of a box and we'll put an indicator on that spring and then of course on the box we're going to mark little lines telling us how far the spring has stretched and what force relates to that distance of stretch these markings are referred to as a scale so this whole device is actually referred to as a scale we are using a scale so now when we hang our object on here that spring stretches and pulls down, and wherever the indicator is tells us how far the spring has stretched, and in turn how much force um, that object is pulling on the spring, or how much force gravity is pulling on that object. Mass, on the other hand, is measured using a balance. A balance is just a very, very, very precise seesaw or teeter-totter. We put the object we're trying to measure on one side, and on the other side, we put known masses. And when it balances, whatever this known mass is, that's also the mass of the object we're measuring. Now you might think, well, that's really not different. We're still using gravity. We are. But the difference is mass does not depend on the amount of gravity. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say we go to a different planet or we go to the moon. 
where gravity is different. On the moon, depending on where we're at, because Earth's gravitational force um, brings into it, but if you're on the, the side of the moon, it has about one-sixth the gravity of Earth. So that means on its scale here, it's only going to pull with one-sixth of the force. So the indicator is only going to move one-sixth as far. So it's going to look more like that. However, for our balance, yes, the amount that gravity pulls on our object we're measuring changes, but the amount that it pulls on the known mass also changes. So it's going to be the same amount of mass that still balances it out. So the measurement of mass does not change when gravity changes. Now on Earth, gravity is pretty much constant. Um, there's slightly more gravity at the North and South Pole, slightly less at the equator. Um, it, it's, it's a few percent. A, a 200 pound person is actually like six or seven pounds lighter at the equator than they are at the North Pole. But that, that's, like I said, it's a small percentage. It's not significant, not a, a huge change. Um, so on Earth, we tend to just assume gravity is constant, and because of that, we get a little sloppy and we kind of flop back and forth between weight and mass. In the standard system, we actually tend to focus on weight. So let's talk first very quickly about standard mass. The standard unit of mass, what most people have never heard from, is called a slug. Outside of science and engineering, I've never seen a slug actually used for anything. Um, an object that would have a mass of one slug is approximately, well, it's not approximately, it's really exactly 32 pounds. So it's a relatively large unit on um, one slug. Um, actually, that's where the old saying, you ever heard that there's a sl whole slug of them sitting over there? That's where that saying comes from is the, the unit of mass, a slug. We tend to not use mass in the standard system. In the standard system, we focus on weight. So let's start out with our units of weight. Just like everything else, there's several units that had several different uses and applications that have been put together to create a, a weight measuring system. So the first unit we'll talk about is the ton. How many pounds are in a ton? Nobody? 2,000. There we go, thank you. 2,000 pounds in a ton. This is actually what is referred to as one net or short ton. Now, 99.99% of the time when you hear the word ton, that's what they're referring to as 2,000 pounds. However, the fact that there is a net or a short ton implies that there is something called a gross or a long ton. The gross ton or long ton is 2,240 pounds. Why is there, why are there two of them? Why is there a difference? Well, let's say you work a job for 40 hours, $15 per hour. That comes out to be $600. That is the gross amount, the gross pay. But those of you that, you know, that work know that you're not gonna get $600 you're probably going to get somewhere around $400 after they take out taxes and all that other stuff. That is your net pay. That's what you actually get. Well, the same difference applies here between the net and the gross. Um, the ton was originally used for buying and selling grain. The container, you can't just put a ton of grain on a, on a scale. It slides off. So you have to have some sort of container to hold it. The container that held a ton of grain was about 240 pounds. So the gross ton is the grain with the container. The net ton 
is just what you're actually getting for green once you take away the container. In this class, in the homework, you might see the gross ton pop up once or twice, but you will never see a gross ton on a quiz or a test. So on a quiz or a test, if I say ton, I'm always referring to the standard 2,000 pound ton. Now let's look at that pound, one pound. I put the abbreviation up there, but I just changed it to the word pound. Um, pound is abbreviated LB. Now it would have made sense to abbreviate pound as PD. However, in the bookkeeping system for buying and selling grain, PD was already used for paid. Don't want to confuse pound and paid. That's not good. So what they did is they went with the Latin word for pound, which is Libra. So that's where the LB comes from. Smaller than a pound, we have ounces. In the standard US pound, there are 16 ounces. Now, since they used the Latin word to abbreviate pound, they did the same with ounces. The Latin word for ounces is ounza, so they used OZ to abbreviate ounces. There are units smaller than an ounce. Uh, most people don't, we don't use them much, so they're not aware of them. There is something called a dram. There are 16 drams in an ounce. <coughs> And a dram was one of the original apothecary units for medications. You might be prescribed a quarter of a dram of a medication or a half of a dram of a medication. Smaller than a dram, there are minims. Minims are actually um, kind of a crossover unit, a unit of capacity or a unit of weight. Um, one dram contains 60 minims. And then, I don't know why they always go back to a pound for this one instead of defining it off of ounces, but a pound is 7,000 grains. Um, the grains they're talking about are actually the grains of sand that they put in an hourglass. So 7,000 of those grains add up to a pound. They literally took a, a tweezers and would count them out. Now it didn't take long for them to realize that counting out grains was, was tedious. So they came up with standard size containers like little thimbles that held a set amount of grains, at least close to uh, approximately that set amount of grains. So they could pack those full and use them to measure out grains rather than, than actually uh, counting them out one by one. Grains again were used in medications. In fact, grains were so, so uh, entrenched in the medical fields for medications that they have actually absorbed grains into the metric system for medical purposes. Um, they did it very poorly. Uh, the round off errors in the grains um, when they absorbed in the metric system is really bad, but they have done it just because it was so entrenched. Any of you that are into hunting and, and shooting know that grains are a big part of ammunition and stuff as far as sizing your, your, uh, your powder and your bullet. These are the conversions that we will use in this class. But if you remember, we had mentioned with the links, you know, we mentioned King Edward declaring his thumb and foot and everything else to be the official measuring units of the land. Well, we mentioned that other rulers in other areas did the same thing. So our standard units were not standard from one area to the next. Never was that more true than with our units of weight. Um, you hear on the news, if you listen to the financial reports at all, you might hear gold has hit $1,900 an ounce or silver has hit $80 an ounce. What they're talking about there is not the ounces that we are used to. It's not the standard US ounce. Um, the center of the world for years for buying and selling precious metals was the island of Troy in the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Greece. So for buying and selling precious metals, to this day, we still use Troy measurements. The Troy measuring system 
One. Troy Pound is approximately 0.82 US pounds. So the Troy Pound is actually smaller than the US Pound. However, one Troy Pound contains only 12 Troy ounces. So a Troy ounce is actually slightly larger than the US ounce. We're not gonna test on these. You're not gonna need to know any of those. But I just wanted you to be aware when you're listening to that saying, you know, gold is at, at $1,900 an ounce or whatever price it's at. Those are different ounces than the ones we use in, in our standard practice. There are crossovers between our, our weight and our capacities. Um, one of those, the, the most logical crossover is the fluid ounce. And we talked about this last week. A fluid ounce is actually defined to be the size of one ounce of water. So we can use that if, if we are measuring water, we can use that to find the weight of what it is we are measuring. Or if we're using something that's very close in density to water. It's going to be the same thing. If you know gasoline is close and relatively close in density to water, a little bit, a little bit less dense, um, but it, it a uh, one fluid ounce of that weighs a pro really close to one ounce of weight. So it's close enough in density that it's really close to the same weight. One gallon then. again of water or something really close to water weighs approximately eight pounds so this is actually one of the better conversions in in the standard system as far as between units because you know eight pounds is not a horrible it's not a really ugly decimal or weird fraction or anything like that not a terrible conversion from capacity to weight when we're measuring water. Now I had a student actually ask me yesterday, why do they always use water? Well, there are a few reasons for that. Um, one, water is pretty plentiful, and the other, water is relatively harmless. Uh, it's, not, you know, it's not poisonous or anything like that. And it's relatively consistent from, from one region to the next. There's not gonna be water that's heavier or lighter than than others, unless you get into the nuclear uh, reactors and stuff where they create their own special water. Um, we're not gonna get into heavy water in this class. Um, excuse me, let's talk about metric. In the metric system, they tend to focus on mass. The reason being is gravity, weight gra depends on gravity, and gravity is controlled by the Earth. They couldn't like, control that to create it however they wanted to. So let's start out talking about metric weight. And of course, weight is a measurement of force. So it's actually metric force. The unit of force or weight in the metric system is a Newton. Um, a Newton is, is the force that gravity would have on one, a one kilogram mass. So one kilogram ma uh, of mass is actually about 9.8 Newtons. So I shouldn't say a Newton is the force on one kilogram. 9.8 Newtons is the force on one kilogram. Again, outside of science and engineering, you don't really see the Newton the whole lot. Um, but the only place you might see it is if you're looking at pressures, um, you know, your Newton per meter squared or whatever on, in pressure systems. Um, for dairy, if you have your, your milker pumps and compressors, they'd be measured either in pascals or atmospheres as far as their ability to pressurize 
or in the metric it'd be newton um Newton per uh, square meter or Newton per square centimeter is their pressure capabilities. Let's look at metric mass. As we said, the metric system tends to focus on mass. The unit, just like any other item in the metric system, they have one unit and the unit they use is a gram. And to Define the gram. One gram was defined to be the mass of one milliliter of water. So there's that water coming into play again. So one gram was the mass of one milliliter of water. So one gram, abbreviated with a G. If we went smaller, it was decigrams, that's DG, that's a tenth of a gram. Centigram, CG is a hundredth of a gram. And milligram, MG is a thousandth of a gram. Just like our other units, we skipped 10,000 and 100,000. And then it was microgram is a millionth. If you do any paramedic training or EMT training in the medical fields, they often abbreviate that MCG instead of MUG. Remember, mu is that weird Greek letter that looks like that. Um, the reason they abbreviated MCG in the medical fields, like we've mentioned, is everything in the medical fields is generally keyboard into a computer system, and there is no mu key on the keyboard. So they use MCG so that they don't have to, to copy and paste a symbol every time they go to type that microgram. Larger than a gram, we have decagram. D-A-G is 10 grams. Hg is a hectogram, 100 grams, and kg is 1,000 grams or kilogram. Then again, we tend to skip 10,000 and 100,000. We go up to mega, a breed with a capital M. So capital Mg is a megagram or a million grams. So one megagram is one million but more importantly, it's 1,000 kilograms. 1,000 kilograms is a gram. 1,000 milligrams is a kilogram. 1,000 times 1,000 is a million grams in the megagram. Um, one megagram, or the 1,000 kilograms, is what is often referred to as a metric ton. Again, if you listen to any of the financial reports in the international trading, you might hear that corn is selling for, I don't know what the price is even more, anymore now, um, might be selling, I'm just going to make up a number, but corn might be selling for $800 a ton. That is a metric ton that they're talking about. That's not the U.S. ton. Um, all international trade is now done in metric tons, metric units rather than, than standard U.S. units. Now, the gram is a pretty small unit. Um, one milliliter of water, and that's one cubic centimeter, about the size of a sugar cube of water. A gram is slightly heavier, slight, slightly more mass than a paper clip. So it's pretty small. So we use the kilograms tend to be our focus when we're talking about mass, and that's what we compare to our standard units. But we do use the grams. Like I said, the megagram or the metric ton gets used in international trade, and we use the milligrams. And of course, in the medical fields, we use the micrograms. The other units, the hecagram, hectogram, decagram, decigram, and centigram. Boy, I think I've seen centigrams in a couple of applications, but I can't think of any application where I've seen the other ones actually used. We just tend not to use them. Once they created those prefixes, they realized that. It, it was more than what was needed. We really only needed the, the, main, the main ones, the thousands like we have here. Converting is just like it is with any other metric unit. If I have 4,200 milligrams, and I want to convert to grams, from milligrams to grams is three spots to the left on my chart. 
If I just move those three spots to the left, that is 4.2 grams. So just like any other conversion that we have, between our metric and standard, one kilogram is approximately, and um, we tend to use 2.2 pounds. It's technically like 2.2083, something like that. But we use 2.2 pounds. So if we have a 200 pound person, what are they gonna weigh in kilograms? Now first, before I do this conversion, I want to point out kilograms is a unit of mass. Pounds is a unit of weight. Like I said, we tend to get very sloppy um, working between mass and weight. But because gravity, like I said, is pretty constant on Earth, we can get away with jumping between mass and weight. But be aware that this is a, a very sloppy conversion. I'm um, in the medical fields, they have things that are labeled, solutions are labeled um, weight and volume or weight and weight solutions. And what they're actually using now, since the medical field has gone mostly metric, what they're actually using is mass in volume, not weight. But we, we've gotten sloppy with the traditional, uh, left the traditional notation in there, even though we've switched to metric and mass rather than standard weight. So anyway, we're going to ignore the fact that we are converting a weight into a mass. We got 200 pounds. We're going to put pounds on bottom, kilograms on top. One kilogram is 2.2 pounds. So the kilograms cancel out. 200 times one kilogram is 200 kilograms. One times two is 2.2. We divide that out, that becomes 90.91 kilograms. So a 200 pound person is 90.91 kilograms of mass. Because of this equivalency, this definition of a gram, it allows us to do conversion between volumes and mass. So let's say that this tank here is 1.2 meters by 0.8 meters by 0.6 meters. Our volume of that, we would have the area of our base 1.2 meters times 0.8 meters, 0.96 meters squared. So our volume will be the 0.96 meters squared times 0.6 meters of height. Here is 0.576 meters cubed. Now we want to convert that, we, our equivalency from volume to capacity is a centimeter cubed to a milliliter. So I'm going to have to convert my 0.576 meters cubed into centimeters cubed. Well, meters to centimeters is two spots to the right on the chart, but since they're cubed, each spot is three decimal places. So two spots on the chart become six decimal places. So I go one, two, three, and then I start adding zeros, four, five, six. That is 576,000 cubic centimeters, which a cubic centimeter is equivalent to a milliliter. So that is 576,000 milliliters. Well, if this is filled with water, that is also 576,000 grams because one milliliter of water is the definition of one gram. So now if I wanted that in kilograms, from grams to kilograms, three spots to the left on my chart, so I move my decimal point three spots to the left, it's 576 kilograms of water that would be held in that tank. So you can see the metric system it's pretty simple to go from volume to capacity 
into mass because the units are all defined off of each other. In the standard system, oh, let's say that this is eight feet by five feet by three feet. So the area of our base to do our volume is going to be the 8 feet by 5 feet, 40 square feet. So my volume will be the 40 square feet times 3 feet of height, or 120 cubic feet. Well, we need to convert that cubic feet into capacity, into gallons. One cubic foot is 7.5 gallons, approximately. So the cubic feet cancel out. We have 120 times 7.5, which is 900 gallons. And then we need to convert the 900 gallons into pounds. Again, assuming that contains water. one gallon is approximately eight pounds of water so the gallons cancel out 900 times eight pounds is 7200 pounds so that tank would hold 7200 pounds now it was not a huge amount of more steps it's the same number of steps to get from volume to to weight in our standard system as it is to get from volume to mass in the metric system the difference is, in the metric system, a lot of things are either equivalent or just a matter of moving the decimal point to get from one unit to the other. Whereas in the standard system, we had to remember these equivalencies, these conversion factors, like 7.5 gallons in a cubic foot and 8 pounds in a gallon. So we have to be careful to keep, get the correct conversion factor, and then the calculation is a little trickier. I sound like I'm pushing really hard for the metric system, and I'm not, but I do see the advantages of it. And we are going to end up on the metric system at some point. Okay, so our homework for today. Again, from that we started last week. Page 238. 51 through 56, that's the standard units of weight. And page 266, 49 through 54, those are our metric units of mass. Uh, what we're looking at right now is we're probably looking at finishing unit three probably sometime next week. So in the next couple of weeks, we're, we're going to be hitting our Unit 3 test, just so you're prepared for that coming up. We have at least one more quiz before we get there, though. Anybody have any questions? Okay, we have about seven minutes left, so you're welcome to use that to start your homework. I'll be on the network here to answer.